Welcome to Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron on the PSP. Main reason I'm doing this is because it has a completely different story than the others. So if they have unique stories, then we have a reason to do them. If it was just a different port of the same story, then that would be pointless. But it is unique, so therefore I wanted to do it. Uh, getting this running wasn't too difficult, although I really had to get used to the controls. The game's pretty easy on the normal difficulty. You also get infinite tickets, so you're not constantly rushing the counter like uh, we had to do in Battlefront 2. You could put it in Elite mode, that makes it harder, and you get limited tickets. But I'm just going to play it on normal. And uh, music is off as usual, because it plays all of the classic stuff. And uh, the LP of the game would probably have like 50 fucking claims if we didn't do that. I'll probably still get some with it muted because of the um, cutscenes, the hard-coded cutscenes where it plays some of it in the background. We might still get hit, but eh, we'll just have to deal with those. So we do have subtitles on. Which, uh, yeah. So in case we end up having to mute anything or or if it's not loud enough. Hopefully the sound's in a good place. But it's not consistent, because the in-game dialogue is very low. Then the cutscenes are at a good point, and then the sound effects are uh, very loud. But I pre-played the campaign, and I actually played one round on the Galactic Conquest, so I've got some experience now. I should be able to just mow through this. But, um... But when we start, uh, there's going to be another text scrawl, as you would expect, the traditional Star Wars text scrawl, and I'm going to be skipping over it, because that will most likely get you blocked or claimed. You'll get visual matches on those, in addition to the music. It plays music, but you can mute that music, and they'll still get you for a visual claim for that Star Wars uh, text scrawl. So... But it doesn't say anything important, so we're just going to be uh, skipping over it. You like what's in the text crawl? Uh, you basically see after anyway. But yeah. So we're gonna skip over this and pick it up after it's finished. We're back. That should have been pretty seamless. Commander Coursera, I am Archivist Tion of the Jedi Temple here on Coruscant. I must say, Commander, you are a most difficult man to track down. I find I generally live longer that way. What can I do for you? We are compiling a history of the Rebel Alliance's struggle against the Empire. In the course of our research, we've come across references to a previously unknown unit. Regrettably, the Alliance's records gave us little information about it other than the fact that General Han Solo hired you to form it. Renegade Squadron, right? I'm not surprised there's nothing in the records about us. What exactly did you do during the Civil War? The Rebellion's been over a long time. Maybe it's time people knew about Renegade Squadron and what we did back then. Back then, most of the recruits to the Alliance were farm boys and dreamers, like Skywalker. They had spirit, but it wasn't always enough. When Han Solo asked me to strengthen the defenses on Yavin 4, I knew he really wanted warriors, not dreamers. Me? I was the guy he sent to find him. It wasn't hard. The galaxy was full of people who hated the Empire. Smugglers, pirates, gunfighters. It didn't matter what they'd been before. All that mattered was that they were willing to fight and maybe die for the Alliance. I tracked them down and offered them whatever it took. In the end, I found enough of what I was looking for. Back on Yavin 4, Solo and I started the work of turning them into a squadron. A lot of them were wanted men who were used to being on the run from bounty hunters. There are no records of them because they were so good at keeping a very low profile. We knew the Empire was coming to Yavin 4. The only question was, could we buy enough time for the rest of the Alliance personnel to get away safely? OK. 
Okay, so there you go. But the opening text scroll basically told you what you had already seen. The game opens up with the movies already being over, so it's after episode 6. And this lady named Tony or such was trying to find out about the renegade squadron that supposedly fought during the war, but there was very little information about them, so she tracked down that guy which was their leader, and now he's going to tell you the story, so the campaign is just one big flashback. So, here we go. Oh, and it wipes your customization, okay. Well, this is the tutorial, and I know that we're going to need a jetpack and a fusion cutter, so let's go ahead and equip those. I don't think anything else really matters that much. I'll just slot the health. But the game is nice enough to wait for you until you spawn the first time. So personalization. This is where you can customize your soldier appearance-wise. You get three bodies, three heads. Although if you pick Wookiee, then you can only get the Wookiee heads. You can't put the Wookiee heads on the other bodies, obviously. But on those two, you can get the alien ones or the human. I just go with human. I like the Vanguard because it's darker. The insignia doesn't matter. It's only used in multiplayer. But each of the factions have this. In the campaign, you only play the Republic. And then the customization is your weapons. All this stuff. So you get a main weapon, secondary weapon, explosive, special stuff. It's your jetpack, jump pack, shield, stealth suit, recon, auto turret. You can drop a little turret. Health and ammo. Power up is the stuff that you can cast that will affect you and anyone around you. Although the auto repair is a passive. This is important on the spacecraft missions or if you want to use vehicles a bunch or often because you'll get auto repair. And then these are your stats. So health, speed. This is stamina and capture speed. I usually put at least one in this. Because that will double your command post capture speed in addition to giving you one third more stamina to sprint around the map. But uh, as for weapons, blaster rifle standard, very good. Arc caster is okay. The freeze incinerator shotgun I'll basically never use. Sniper rifle is okay, but it's not that applicable if you're the one doing all of the work like the campaign wants you to. You constantly have to take bases and you're not you don't want to be short range combat with a sniper rifle. The chain gun is amazing, but it costs forty credits, so that's gonna eat up most of your budget. And the bowcaster is kind of gimmicky. I don't know if it's worth the extra five points. I'd rather just have a blaster rifle for twenty five with this thing. Then here's your rocket launcher twenty five. But if you don't want to use that, a good alternative is the grenade launcher for 20. Almost as good as the rocket launcher, just don't have the range. So if you carry these two, that is a very good combo. The chain gun is 40 on its own, so... But that is good for back in infantry. These two are free. Either the pistol or the fusion cutter. Oh, I got try shot the PPC, you should recognize that. It's a secondary weapon, though. And then, explosive blaster pistol. This is okay. It's kind of like a poor man's sniper rifle. Because it will whack an infantry on one shot, but it won't do much damage to vehicles or stuff. Guided rocket. This is a rocket launcher, but you have to control it. You generally don't want to do that. So, anyway. We're not going to use most of the stuff that's on there. Explosive, grenades, debt packs. You're going to need those on some of the missions. It'll tell you when. Landmines. The cluster grenade is basically an upgraded frag grenade. It covers a larger area. Got the rockets. Poor man's rocket launcher, but it's on the explosive slot. So if you don't want to have it on these, you can put it there with 20 points. But anyway, this is good for now. Let's spawn.
Tutorial mode. Engage. Start the pop-ups. No option to skip. You just gotta suffer through all the pop-ups. You can't even skip until it gives you the prompt. So you have to wait for the prompt to then be able to get off of it. I can't get past it until it says press X. The temple is going to be our base of operations for this mission. I need you to secure the command post. Show me what you can do. Good job. Looks like the temple door mechanism is fried. You're no good to me stuck in there. You're going to need a jetpack to get out. Okay, I have it on. I'm mid-air, and it says, here's how you activate. See the hole above the temple door? Use your jetpack to fly out of there. Okay, now open the temple door from the outside. The first wave of Imperials... Yes, I know. really need to use this, but okay. May as well. He's got his shield up. That's another thing you can equip for 25 points on the power-up. And it is uh, pretty good, at least in the short term. Oh, yeah, we'll need to switch for that. I know we have a max of 100 credits. Thank you, game. But yeah, if you just put 25 toward the shield, I mean, that's that's better than 30 over here. But it kind of depends, because the shield does decay on its own. You can't just have it up all the time. But if you have a bunch of enemies shooting at you, and you put that thing up, you get, like, four bars of health that they have to beat off. So. That put us at 95. I don't think we'll worry about it at the moment. Although, we, need, we just need a rocket launcher. Still got the fusion covered. But that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, put the shield up. It's just about four bars of health. But it's burning itself. It's good in the short term, then it has to recharge. Okay, get this off. Well, that puts me at 100. They kind of reverse this gun. It shoots... It shoots at a line when it's not charged, and then if you do charge it, the blast comes closer together. So when it's fully charged, it's just like one big laser.
Shield can be pretty good, though, for uh, diving into danger and shit. Yeah, there you go. But we're also going to have a space tutorial. That was chapter one. Now it's time for chapter two. Renegade Squadron got the last of our forces out, but that didn't change the fact that the Alliance was now on the run. We needed a new base. That's when Solo told me about Alderaan. Before Alderaan was destroyed by the Death Star, Bay and Morgana had made a list of locations for the Alliance to operate from in the event that we might lose our base on Yavin 4. He encrypted the information in the Data Holocron, which was encased in Frick, one of the strongest substances in the galaxy. Strong enough even to have survived Alderaan's destruction. We needed that Holocron. The information on it was vital to the survival of the Alliance. Okay. So on any space level, switch to your auto repair. Vehicle will fix itself. Then you may want to get the blaster and grenade launcher combo for if you're going into the enemy transport, the enemy ship, which it generally tells you to do on in the, the campaign. This shoots infantry, this shoots the other stuff. These don't really matter in the ship. The only thing out of this whole list that matters when you're in a ship is the auto repair. But when we get out of the ship enemy in the hangar, then we will use all the other stuff. Okay, Renegade Squadron, get to your ship. We're gonna have to clear a path through those fighters for Solo. Need to take out enemies. There is an autopilot, so if you don't care that much about flying, you just want to get through these. There's no option to skip, but it's really not that difficult. don't want to cheese with the autopilot, we could fly on our own. Our homing rockets. The lasers also try to auto aim, but you need to have. A, we need to lock on the enemy. Now it wants us to get interceptors. Got 
loading my guff and Fancy stuff we can do, but it uses your energy. Oh, look who it is. Bubble fat. Start hitting the enemy ship now. Oh, those are already out. Did you say gravity well projector. to level three. and get off Ward Mantell before the nearest Star Destroyer squadron turned up. Simple, right? Okay. I'm gonna take this back off. Not gonna need it. Tempted to, uh, roll us the chain gun. But if we pick that... Then this slot's basically going to be open. A fusion cutter, maybe, if we need it. Chain gun has infinite ammo. It just charges up. So you don't really need a secondary with that. And that puts us at 85. We could get a um, like cluster grenade. Although there's also power up, so generate. But I think this is good. Oh, they're already they're supposed to wait for us. They know who we are now. Time to get off planet. Falcon's still under repair. Sent through too much with her to even think about leaving her behind. You heard so low. We're not leaving this backwater planet till the Falcon's ready. Secure the junkyard. That's where we'll find the parts we need. I'll let someone else take the tank. I got more important shit to do than fool around in that. Can't capture in a vehicle as it is.
chain gun actually works out better in this game than it did Battlefront 2. class system did screw with some things, like the destroyer droids, because now anyone can get the shield. You just, you grab the chain gun with a shield, that's basically the destroyer droid. So, uh, I think we were better off with classes, I just wish you could customize the classes a little bit, instead of being just locked into whatever it is they were going to give you. But we, uh, we have all of one thing or all of the other. We don't have a middle ground. I think what they should have done is given us three or four classes and then let us customize some things on the classes. Like the heavy trooper could have been the one to get either the chain gun or the rocket launcher, the big weapons. Not really equipped for this thing. Well, the grenades took it out. So. Might need a rocket launcher. Coming through. Don't mind me. You just run past a lot of enemies in this game. There's the generator. I don't really want to stay here with this fucking mech. Can't capture that base anyway, it's locked. The campaign is scripted. You can only take what they want you to take. just were. There's no time limit. But the game's only 8 versus 8 because of downscaling on the portable. It's not showing us the chart yet. Does the campaign not show the score sheet? We're getting back to the Falcon. Now there is a time on. Gotta protect this base. That robot you saw is called IG-80. If you've played Shadows of the Empire, you probably have fucking rep repressed nightmares about fighting that thing. <laughs> on that damn train of doom. I remember being stuck on that level for a while. But I was probably stuck on every level for a while in that game. The game was a nightmare. You know, difficulty-wise. 
was still a, a decent, it was still a decent game on the 64. It's very hard. Probably have to use quick saves. Like, oh, you missed a jump. You're dead. You got to restart the level. I use his two blaster rifles and a flamethrower. Those are his primary weapons. I played him on one of the Conquest maps. You can play heroes in this game, just not very many in the campaign. Just as those Imperial Star Destroyers turned up. That's when we found out about Commander Akbar. He'd been captured while on his recon mission. Akbar was vital to the Alliance, the best battle tactician we had. We had to get him back. Information from Alliance Command was that he was being held aboard a Star Destroyer, en route to the Imperial prison colonies on Kessel. Too many of my friends had been sent there, never to come back. The Imperial interrogators there would soon make Akbar talk. We couldn't allow that to happen. Our orders were to intercept the Star Destroyer and rescue Akbar. After being on the run since Yavin, it felt good to be taking the war back to the Empire. We gotta rescue Akbar. Let's see. I'm trying to find my auto repair. We're gonna spend most of the time flying, but for when we do go into the enemy ship. Oh, that's. I want this one. The game cares about them a hell of a lot more than Disney did. I think they just, like, flushed him out the window. Off camera. Death scene. No one gave a shit. They were too busy having Leia do a Mary Poppins scene flying through fucking space. Looks like Akbar hasn't reached Kessel yet. We need to get him off that Star Destroyer before it's too late. Got to neutralize the Star Destroyer's communications array first. Stop them summoning reinforcements from Kessel. Secure this area before we can worry about going to get him. But Akbar died in the uh, the Last Jedi, a garbage ass movie.
I don't know if I should abuse the autopiloting or not. It's not that hard to begin with. My blasters are overheated. We're going to get them anyway with the homing muscles. The lasers also try to auto-aim, but DPS is pretty weak. This one's got a bunch of health. I don't know where he went. was following him. But normally music plays everywhere in the game. But yeah, copyright. an auto dock but I've had it crash me before I don't know whether or not you want to trust it one of the times I wanted I tried to use it it just fucking crashed gotta get a transport order. I don't know why we have the uh, clone era transport but were not in the original movies. Where'd you find this relic? Gotta get our asses over there if we want to get Akbar. People are shooting at us, it ain't a big deal. Okay, here's where our ground stuff will come into play. You cannot take their base. You can actually spawn on the transport. Wow, this thing has a shit ton of health. Just use this. Well, it worked. He's not even in a cell. He's he just standing in here, and he already has a gun, too. Thank you. Now we must find a way back off this star destroyer. It looks like he was already breaking out. He just wasn't brave enough to go to the hangar. Okay, now here's where you really don't want to die because uh, Akbar is on this ship. So if you use the autopilot and it decides to crash you into the side of the ship, uh, mission failed. Although it just auto docked. Must have been thinking about a different scene. Maybe it was when I was going over to their ship it happened. Here, just skipped over it.
But anyway, uh, that's the end of this mission. It's time for level four. They're not labeling these. Akbar told us what had happened. He'd been investigating Ba's Pity, a cemetery world on the Outer Rim, with abandoned ruins that would make an ideal base. Leading his survey teams there, Akbar took a small scout party to sail Yukami, another of the worlds on Bail Organa's list. They never made it. They were attacked and boarded by a bounty hunter out to collect the Empire's reward for captured rebels. Akbar was handed over to the Imperials, but the bounty hunter kept his crew and droids. Extra profit to be sold as slaves and scrap. I knew there was only one place in this quadrant where he could do that. The hut slaver markets on Tatooine. Chances were the captured crew were either dead or sold as slaves already. But no one in Renegade Squadron believed in abandoning good men. Okay, we're back on the ground. I think we already have a good setup. We could try the jump back. To, uh, jump around. I have to drop that grenade launcher. Pistol. Oh, yeah, we can drop this as well. So do we want anything else? Well, I could put on our chain gun, but that makes me overweight. That puts me at five. And just give me the give me the blaster and give me more health. Run straight there. This is the door. Yeah, the controls are really awkward, even when you've gotten used to them, so. Oh, I should have had a grenade. My team is on the way, they just took longer to get here. <laughs> here they come. This is a good situation to have the auras. Use one of those because it buffs all of the bots. If you want to power up the bot army, you can do that with the auras. The defense and the damage are pretty good. this. In fact, that's what we should be doing. I could dock one of these and put this on either Rally or Rage. Well, Rage is 15, so I can't afford it. Stamina. Yeah. Rally's cheap. Gives everyone an armor buff. Basically makes up for having that one health block because you'll have more defense anyway. But that has a limited duration. Those buffs only have, I think, a 50% uptime. So you'll have them on for half the time if you're constantly firing them. But it affects all of the bots, too. This is the defensive one, which is the cheap one. He 
just died. <laughs> Make sure nothing... Blah! That didn't happen last time, but... I didn't know he could die, because last time he just walked right out there and he was fine. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to try and take us a grenade this time. And we could just drop this. We don't need this for anything. Although, why don't I just put the grenade launcher back on? You see, that's the grenade launcher just ends up being better, usually. Cluster grenade is good. Okay. Cluster grenade and auto turn. Let's try this again. I just preemptively take that out. Like, no, you cannot bet a game. You don't know what that is yet. Your character does not know. Well, I tried, but they kind of scattered around. Should have put this over there. You can get another one from the ammo pod. And I think I just did. Put it over here. I'm not at the ammo pod though. Maybe I picked it up from the ammo pickup. this again. I need to get my ass out there first. Well, he only has to get, like, right over there. They had a damn mech here, too. You can only have one of these out, so if you if you place a new one, you're you're smashing the other one because you're you're moving it. We don't want them shooting at him. He's a weak sissy. Okay, he should be fine now. That, that one down. We could take this one over here. I think it matters. Good. The ammo droid. That's what we need. I 
get the third one. Two are located in one direction. One's located over here. Of course it's gonna be guarded. Don't worry about the rest of them, just go. There will always be another stormtrooper to shoot at. They're actually following me over here. That cluster fucking works. 15 points. Not as good as the grenade launcher, but that's 20. Now we have to defend. We can't lose this during the timer. So we may have uh, infinite lives, but there's still plenty of ways you can fail. some damage, but it, it's not going to be enough, really. Try that. That puts me over budget. Even if I take this off, I'm still fat. Drop that. I guess we'll keep the turn. 95. You can double rocket launcher, but... The other one is a guided rocket, so it's very slow to use. I'd rather just have the grenade launcher on that slot. I don't want to guide a rocket around. Out of rockets. Well, let's try the other weapon. worked. Now we just need to get to the Millennium Falcon. Pretty sure I can do that. Now, just don't even worry about the build, just go. If you put on one of the, the jet or the jump pack, you get there much better, but I think that's what I did last time. I jumped on top of the Falcon. I was standing on top of it when the mission succeeded. Level 6. Despite the odds, we made it out of one piece. and brought our people back with us. It should have been a miracle rescue. It wasn't. It was a trap, and we walked right into it. Someone had placed a tracker beacon inside the R2 unit. The same someone that was waiting for us when we left N2. We led him straight back to the Alliance's new base. It was only a couple of hours after our arrival at Ba's Pity that an Imperial Planetary Assault Force descended on us. This place was a graveyard world, littered with the remains of giant, extinct beings. We didn't want our bones to join them, but the situation looked grim. If this was going to be the Renegade Squadron's last stand, then we were going to make 
letting the Empire remember it. Okay, we'll take a look at our bill here. Go back to that. It's a very fat gun, so we're not going to carry much else with that. Could just use the health for the last bit. Or a shield. That kind of works. I'm going to be slow as shit, but... Chain gun, shield, 2 out of 3 on health. I'm trying to remember what you do on this map. I might have to switch afterwards. Probably better off just taking the rally ability for 10 as opposed to the shield for 25 because it hits hits the other people as well. It's not better for you personally, but... See, we're not exactly alone. I mean, this game only does 8 versus 8. But you can have the whole team, everyone, on one point. And the maps are kind of small, so... It's easy to hit the shield, though. See how much bigger it is. They don't have to hit you to hurt the shield, they just have to hit the shield. computer doesn't hit you most of the time, because their accuracy is shit, but they will pretty much always hit the shield. We could just put this on. Five. Ten. But now we've got the walkers coming, so... This is a combo I generally like, these two. If we just take that off... There you go. Blaster, Grenade, Rally, Max Health. Fire it up. Switch weapons. We need to use these things. Get this thing loaded back up. Come on, load it up. Aim down the sides, but you typically only do that with the sniper rifle. an orbital strike thing that I haven't tried out yet. I might want to try that on a tank or something. We've got a giant mech coming. Now we wait. It's going to take some time for that thing to get over here. Oh, why don't we try out the orbital, orbital strike? I don't remember how to use this. Ion cannon ready. Good for bombing a base. You get out of this. I'm being shot. Of 
course, it's going to shoot at me. shoot us either. But he can definitely shoot us. Don't I have to set that off? I can't remember. I guess that's automatic. And somehow that totally blew it up. Although that, they did get the base, so... That doesn't seem to be very good. It's, it, it, I mean, it kills infantry, but if you were hoping to, to damn nuke the uh, vehicles, I mean, that's not even scratch. No. But you might notice that most of the missions are just evacuating, evacuating, escaping, escaping. They definitely have you fighting a losing war for most of this. Okay, yeah, let's let's dump that. It's okay against infantry. I don't know why Akbar would have been wounded on the field. He's not a ground soldier. He's a ship commander. And if we fight everything, then we'll be here all day, so... What are you doing out here, Akbar? He'll recover. It's not going to matter much, though, if we don't get off this planet. Chewie and I are prepping the evacuation craft now. Hold them back for as long as you can. Okay, let me get back. Get our asses up in here. And I might be tempted to get in that tank. Someone behind me. I'm trying to back up. Yeah, there's a bunch of people behind me, no wonder. They do have it at the front though, which I guess is a fine spot to have it. Doesn't look like I can shoot from this spot. You gotta get into the uh the turn. I think I'm just going to let them worry about that, though. So. Got my grenade launcher. Well, you guys going to attack us or what? I mean, we're going to win by default. We're defending. You got to come to us right now. They're on their way. They're just, like, dragging ass. Put some landmines up there if you want. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Okay, 
Okay. Time for level seven. And that was when the Alliance found refuge on Hoth. It was Skywalker that discovered Hoth. An ice world so remote it didn't appear on any of the regular charts. For a few cold years, it was our home. A place to strike back against the Empire. If the Imperials hadn't heard of Renegade Squadron before, they knew it now. We hit them hard and fast wherever we found them. Vanishing before they barely even knew we'd been there. It felt good to know that we didn't have to run anymore. We should have known better. Somehow, they found us again. Matter of time. Everyone has heard of the Empire's victory at Hoth that day. What no one knows, though, is that without Renegade Squadron, nobody would have made it off Hoth alive. So this is going to be a different perspective. It's mostly inside the base instead of the traditional outside. That is much more common in games. We're going to take our chain gun, the auto turret. I'm looking at taking rally, and I don't think we're really going to need this, but yeah, I think that'll do. Trying to shoot around my guys. Doesn't care that much if you kill your own guys, but I try not to. Got a shield. I can't anywhere the shit with these controls, so I'm just always locking on. Yeah, I need to just get to it. They're going to keep respawning, just get to the base. take longer to heal. Sometimes that can be an issue. Whereas if you have the shield, it would just come back on its own. Or rally. They amount to the same thing. You'll live longer in combat. But they don't have to be healed at the droid. trying to get the objectives. No one else is going to do it. If I can find my way around the base... Well, one is over there. See, they block the path here. This is that south base you're usually familiar with on the map. The shield generator is right over, uh, at least it should be. But yeah, they changed the map. 
because instead of being in the front, now we're... shielded. Not gonna let us take it. We just need to set that off and then go. And, uh... The infinite tickets is nice. You're not constantly being rushed like the other game. You just you just take your time. Although both of them did that. So if you want to sit around and fight for a while, you can do it. you can. This is the hangar of damn doom from uh Shadow of the Empire. I think they have you fight these bloodlusted Wookiees that just Black you on one slice. Like, you gotta shoot them about a hundred fucking times, but they just slice at you one time, you're dead. I'm trying to heal up. I guess that's good enough. It's not too hard to find your way around. Head in that general direction. The transport is en route to evacuate the IM cannon team. But there's an AT AT in the area. We've got a particle cannon that can take it down, but we need a power source for it. Guess I'll buff you folks. That's actually back at the ship. I want to go this way, I believe. There's that, their orbital cannon there. They were using that to fire at the Star Destroyer so that people could get past the blockade. I mean, getting off the planet. All that's going to enable you to do is to run into the Star Destroyers raiding in orbit. So they were firing at them. Hoth had a space component to it. That's actually going to be the next level. had to try and damage the uh, Star Destroyers that were waiting in orbit. Otherwise all the ships taking off would just immediately get blown up as soon as they went up there. Is there another way down? There is. Can we just go that way? is too scattered out with its objectives. It's like now he wants to come all the way back here. It's like I was just here earlier. Well, if we were able to do that, why didn't the base just do it in the first place? Why not have all of the turrets do that?
Okay, hold on a second. Might not have the force, but... I have a, a, a shield and a chain gun. Time for us to get the hell out of here. Is there a way up there from here? I think now we just need to hold out. Can't lose this bunker. what we want to switch to. That yeah, chain gun is good here, but... Where's my health? Keep that health coming. shots. Basically an auto turn. Don't expect it to do much, but it's only five credits. If you're at 95, you may as well. Okay, it's time for us to get out of here. Out of my way. You folks can stay here. The base is yours. I'm going to orbit. Time for level eight. that day. Defending the Ion Cannon crew as they cleared a path for our transports. We were the last squadron off Hoth. Leaving the Empire standing over the ruins. Up in space, the Imperial fleet was tightening the noose, blocking our escape. We were in the thick of it, doing whatever we could to get our transports through the blockade. We'd already been in one fight of our lives that day. What difference does another one make? <laughs> now we gotta fight in orbit. Should be the last space mission, I think. Get your auto repair. Was I not at 100? Was at 90? Oh, I had Rally. Okay, so switch Rally for the auto repair. But I don't remember if they're going to send us into the enemy ship or not, but I like to have those. So this is good. Well, this is going to be the one where they... Uh, Yeah, they have you steal an enemy ship here, but you only have to go into theirs for a moment. Okay, I don't care what we pilot, and we'll get the job done. This one might actually be better, because it's faster. 
what I remember, this is the faster craft where the X-Wing is tougher. So. Shit. You didn't even get it. At least crash into the turret. Let's try this again. My expert piloting days are a long time ago. Now I remember, this is the level I failed on with the autopilot, because I was bringing back one... They're going to send you to steal one of the enemy ships. You had to pilot it back. I did the autopilot in the hangar, and the game crashed it, and then failed me the mission. It won't just let you respawn. Like before. Once you get the enemy craft, you have to make it back alive or it'll just fail the mission and you're doing it all over again. Which is kind of BS because it was the game's auto-piloting that crashed me. Like, you're the one that crashed it. Like, okay, then just let me respawn. I'll fly over there and get you another one and then land the damn thing myself. It's like, no, mission failed. You gotta redo all of them. We're supposed to be defending this ship, though. And someone just fired rockets at it. Where is this guy? Going all over the place. Just. Auto engage his ass. I can't always keep up with them. Why didn't you just go ahead and jump? Why'd you have to get over there? Let's drive past the enemy ship first and give everything an opportunity to kill us. I defender. It's basically an interceptor with a third wing. But they are well armored. These things are tough. Not only do they have a ridiculous number of lasers, but they're also pretty tough. That's a regular one. Need the defenders. This thing overheats its lasers pretty easily. But the game's pretty easy on the normal difficulty. 
I could probably do it on the harder one, and I'm, back when I owned the game, I'm pretty sure I did. I had a PSP, and this was one of the two games I had on it. I don't think I knew about the lead squadron, I probably would have gotten it. should have gotten the uh, Final Fantasy remakes, because Final Fantasy 1 through 4 has have excellent remakes on the PSP. It's a shame they didn't stay the course, because they, they didn't bother to do 5 and 6. They just abandoned those at that point. They should have just finished the job and did the whole set. So you can fool around with this, but there's no reason to. Yeah, look. Look at all the lasers. And missiles. Yeah. But there's no real reason to fight with this thing. We just need to go dock and then that should complete the mission. I use the craft I just stole to fight? What happened to it? Why is it gone? Oh well. Get back into the X-Wing. There's also a Y-Wing, but that's the bomber. We got Vader. He uses a modified TIE bomber. So it looks a little different. think he would want the, uh, the Thai Defender. This one doesn't seem to overheat as fast. Slower attack rate, I think. The X-Wing is less aggressive, but it's tougher and slower, so if you want armor... But the Y-Wing is the bomber. Okay, now we'll be up to level 9. This will be a fun one, because we're going to Corbin, which is a Sith world. Those were desperate times after Hoff. It must have been difficult to believe there was ever any chance of defeating the Empire. Losing Solo was a blow, but we weren't out of the fight yet. We regrouped with other Alliance forces, heading back at every chance we got, keeping the Rebellion alive, showing the rest of the galaxy that there was still some hope. We fought a lot of battles, but our greatest challenge was still to come, in the run-up to the Battle of Endor. Solo had been rescued by then, and he and his strike team planned to use a stolen Imperial shuttle to get onto the surface of Endor. To maximize the strike team's chance of success, Alliance Command needed more information about the Imperial presence on Endor. That's where we came in. Only one man had access to the kind of information we wanted. Emperor Palpatine himself.
All that rickety coming from my headset, it is just... We knew he was due to make a pilgrimage to the Sith tomb world of Korriban. The information would be with him, held aboard a shuttle. It was a crazy, foolhardy mission. Every member of Renegade Squadron volunteered for it without hesitation. Apparently my headset needs some grease. But I don't worry about it. I mean, it works. Okay. We'll get this off. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Just, I'll just get more health for myself like everyone else. But do we want the chain gun? or got to think about what we want on this mission. I'm not going to use those others. But this is a good build here. The rocket is 20. Yeah, we'll just take that for now. I think... Don't you need the debt packs on this level? It's nice to have that speed back. That's, that speed bonus makes a big difference. I don't think it affects your sprint speed, just the normal speed, which you're not always sprinting. It helps deal with the tacky ass controls. Keep at least one point into the speed. Now everyone shows up. Where's the droids? We need to steal some shit from the Emperor's shuttle. Which means we need it to get here and for him to get off of it. Oh, if you want to put some landmines here, that's probably the only situation they're going to be useful. I even see him. Where the hell are they? Little blue things. Yeah, uh, not worried too much about those. I'm pretty sure you need these. I'm gonna equip them. Oh yeah, you need them for the large statue, actually. But... Do we have the grenade? Yeah, we do have the grenade launcher. This door open. Through. Don't mind me. Or my team decides to get its ass up here and help. Yeah, 
I'm at it. Not too many missions left. Uh, I decided to just do these all in one bit because it's like not very long. Even if it gets up to two hours, it's the entire game. It's funny how many people you can run past. Now we need to break all his shit so that he'll get mad. I'm almost dead. So much damn health is gonna take a while. Can we take this? No, we can't take this. Heal me. You know what? Fuck it. So we don't actually have to fight him. Need to get out of here. I don't know if you can kill him or not. I'm guessing not, because this is scripted, but I haven't tried. just like slot to regenerate at this point but it's 15 I'd rather just have more health probably never use the other power-ups because they cost more two exits to the temple though and if you came this way then you are farther away from the shuttle so you gotta go around we can still get to it but you see if you went through that door you're right next to it it's not a big deal Tried to give you a bunch of objectives other than just get the base, get the base, get the base. Well, the first game was run them out of kills, the second game was get the base. Alright, time for level 10. Out of eleven. Two left. Everything was in place. Solo would soon be on his way to Endor. And now we knew that the Emperor himself would be aboard the new Death Star at the time of the assault. Whatever happened next would decide the success or failure of the entire rebellion. 
Nothing could be left to chance. A diversionary attack on the Imperial-controlled planet of Sullust was ordered, hoping to draw away at least some of the Imperial fleet. We were disappointed not to be part of the Endor attack, but a lot depended on the Sullust raid. The only question was, would the Emperor take the bait? And our build is probably fine as it is. trying to decide if we want to get the chain gun back out or use something different. We could give the bowcaster a try, but it just fires in a, a line. Kind of like a shotgun, but instead of the pellets just going wherever the hell they want, it's a horizontal line, and when you charge it up, they come closer together to form a big burst. Not really impressive. When I have five credits left, I don't upgrade my blaster to this. I put it somewhere else. Yeah, let's just go. Keep moving, Renegade Squadron. We do our job here, and the Emperor will be watching Sullust instead of seeing what's happening on Endor. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work out if you remember the original timeline. The galaxy is a big place. recently found out that EA's monopoly with the Star Wars license is finally going to come to an end. But I think it's too little too late. And it's not even going to happen for like another year or two. Because they've already they've already got it signed. Burke. I mean, they still have the contract signed. So until it expires, nothing is going to change. Yeah, we can't hurt him at the moment. Don't bother to try. You run at such a nicer rate with that post. It's very noticeable. And that's only the first level. But I only need to run so fast. I would rather just have more health. Can we cap this? No. Of course he's following me. I need a fucking deck pack. Great. And I can't take that base, so we'll have to come back over to the other one. He's just gonna follow my ass around. There's the deck pack. Bring this. Though I am still fat. Guess I'll put that back on there, though.
probably be still gonna kill me. Well, I could just respawn or I can go heal. I can also grab a shield. Getting behind the rock. They're using gravity wall protectors to keep us stranded on solid. We need to deactivate the power core on those shields before the projectors can be destroyed. What? Okay. Going back to my grenade launcher. I don't want this. Get, get this shit off. I don't think that's even going to happen for another year or two because the contract that's already going has to expire. Disney might very well change his mind at that point. Be like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll give you another one. We're trying to get over there. always get a jump pack or something, but I think you're better off just upgrading your sprint or energy bar. Probably guess what the last level is. There you go. She previously said we wouldn't be there, but yeah, things change. I was about to bomb a guy or two. That may have been a double kill. But yeah, it wasn't the original plan, but that's how it turned out, I guess. We took control of Sullust, but the Emperor had seen through our plan. We were on our way to Endor before the smoke had cleared. We reached Endor just in time. Slipping past the planetary shield when it was lowered for Solo's strike team. We landed some way from the strike team. We heard over our comms link that Solo's team was surrounded, unable to destroy the shield generator protecting the Death Star. They needed help fast. To make matters worse, Admiral Akbar had found the entire Imperial fleet waiting for him above Endor when he began his attack on the Death Star. It had been a surprise attack had turned into a desperate battle for survival on two fronts. Everything depended on Renegade Squadron getting to General Solo in time. Yeah, I, I hope you hurry up and cut this. The robots are coming. Okay, so my current build should be good. Oh, no, we need a fusion cutter, but I will get the base first.
good thing they can't shoot worth a shit. Well, technically, neither can I, but I have the auto lock. Guess I'll get my chain gun out. turned the rebel surprise attack into a giant ambush in space and on the ground. But what he didn't plan for was the goddamn Ewoks. They ended up making the difference on the ground. Then once the shield is down, That enabled the space force to still do its job. Take down the I might have to get a rocket launcher. Get your ass back over here. You're the objective. Where are you going? Sight to the other one, so. Okay, let me get the rocket launcher. Um, yeah. Get this, but. Double rocket. They almost took the damn thing out. Our allies crumpled an AT AT earlier, but the Imperials are trying to repair it. I'll be a whole lot happier if we can stop that from happening. Wait a minute, there were AT uh, ATs in this fight? I think they just had the little walkers because the jungle is I don't remember the Big Macs being used in that fight. Surprise! There's Leia and Chewie, but they're only going to give us one hero. This game I played before, I even played it online uh, back then. Not for very long. As soon as I realized it was full of goddamn hackers, I was like, yeah, fuck that, I'm done. I'll play the Galactic Conquest. Fuck y'all. You're gonna let hackers run rampant in your multiplayer. You may as well not have one. 
and this wasn't 10 years later. Uh, I mean, this was back when the game was new. In its first couple years, I mean, it was fucked. You ready, Chewie? Do I need to be in this? I mean, they're not going to support a game forever, so eventually either the server is going to be taken down or they're just going to let the uh, hackers run over it like rodents in an abandoned home. But even back when the game was new, they were just rampant on that game. But Elite Squadron I never played. Don't, don't think I even knew about it. So that'll be a new one. Whereas all these others I had played before. zone. Well, they blew it up. That works. I think I turned it neutral, too, so they're not, they can't riz there. But we are almost done with the game. Uh, Hardly anything about a lead squad. I went ahead and got it so that it would be uh, ready, but I don't know how well it's going to run, so. Game's got to run and record well. need right now is just get the base. So, dancing Ewoks over here. But because we're limited on characters, uh, they're not going to help you in combat on this one. I'm taking this... Got infinite ammo on this bitch. We're just gonna keep spawning. You can't, shouldn't be able to spawn here now because they turned yellow. You gotta own it to a pop on it. They're done. Now everyone else is gonna run over here. Don't expect them to help much. Okay, yeah. Well, I had all of those medals already because I pre-played the campaign and did a Galactic Conquest. But I accidentally hit the quick load button and that wiped my save because apparently I had a quick save. 
planted when I first booted the game up from fooling around with the hotkeys. So after getting all of those, I quick loaded all the way back to a fresh boot. But eh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect your your campaign anyway. I guess everyone knows what happened next. What happened next is the player had to fight the fucking copyright robots on YouTube. The end of the Empire. And the beginning of something a lot better for everyone. And Renegade Squadron was disbanded after that? We disbanded ourselves. Faded back into the shadows again. The New Republic needed real heroes. People like Skywalker, Solo, and General Calrissian. And what do you do now, Commander? <laughs> Mostly the kinds of things you don't talk about over an open hollow link. Thank you, Commander. You've been most helpful. I'm glad we were able to set the record straight. Renegade Squadron should be recognized for their sacrifices. Like I said, they weren't the most noble bunch ever to fight for the Alliance, or its most famous squadron. But I can't think of anyone I'd rather have beside me when the thermal detonators are flying and I'm down to my last clip. Wherever they are now, whatever they're doing, may the Force be with them. And that's it. And we're gonna skip this, because it's playing the, the damn music. Although, wait, I could try and mute it. There. But I think this has gone on long enough, regardless. So. Back during the good days of Star Wars, before EA had a goddamn monopoly with the license and just wanted to make multiplayer loot box slot wheels, they're fighting in court right now trying to say this isn't gambling it's not gambling it's like it is fucking gambling it's it's pathetic how far they're trying to go to protect their bullshit but if their monopoly with the license ever goes away maybe we can go back to having uh, decent Star Wars games again like, during the prequel years, that's when all the best Star Wars games were made. Because, uh, during the original saga, there there wasn't, video gaming was, was very limited at the time. So, uh, like in the 2000s, that's when consoles started to get really good. And not all of them were even based on the movies. Or they were just like loosely related. You look at games like Bounty Hunter. It's still playing the music. But you you look at look at the list of Star Wars games. There's like this massive list over the years. And then look what happened to it when EA got it. It's sad. But we can always replay the old games and try to relive the good days. They didn't even bother to put a campaign in their first one. It's like, oh, we're going to make a multiplayer only. But I basically have no interest in their newer one. The campaign with the Jedi, maybe. That would be the only one. thanking their families. Okay. Special thanks, George Lucas, for not giving EA a fucking monopoly of the license. 
can't say the same thing about Disney. Okay, we're back on the menu. Well, that's it for Renegade Squadron. We'll see what has in store next time.